Good afternoon. Uh, we're going to get started. My name is Deborah Gonzalez, and I'm the Government Affairs Director at uh, the Public Policy Institute of California, or PPIC. I want to thank you for coming. I suspect that all of you didn't win the big lottery, and that's why you're here with me today. Um, this is the second best thing to the lottery. Um, I'm just saying, thanks, Alyssa. Uh, for the record, I would have come to work even if I had won it. I might not have, but I'm saying that for now. For those of you not familiar with PPIC, we're a nonpartisan, nonprofit think tank with offices in San Francisco and Sacramento. And for today's presentation, we're going to hear from PPIC researcher Alyssa Dykman, who will present the findings from PPIC's latest survey of Californians and their governments. We'd like to thank the James Irvine Foundation and the PPIC Circle for their support of this important survey. And we would also like to thank the PPIC Corporate Circle and PPIC Donor Circle for helping me making this lunch and the event possible today. At registration, you should have received a fact sheet uh, and some documents uh, containing this, uh, some of the key findings in the survey. The full report, along with the cross tabs and the time trends for adults and likely voters, as well as the slides from today's presentation are now available online at ppic.org. After Alyssa's presentation, we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers. We are recording this, um, this event, and so I'm sorry about that comment about not coming to work when, if I won the, sorry, but it is recorded. So a few things before we begin. What we would like you to do is if you raise your hand, uh, we'll bring a microphone and so they can hear your question in the recording. If you are interested in water and who isn't, please join us over at the Sheraton on November 13th for our half-day conference on water priorities for the next governor. Full event information will may be found on our website. And later today, of course, the survey team loves to do surveys, so they'll send you out a survey. And please uh, respond to that survey because uh, we do take your comments into consideration. And please turn off your cell phones. This is our last survey before the November 6th election. And you may have noticed there's an election because of the endless commercials interrupting the voice. But on the other hand, not much has changed in the survey from our previous survey. Gavin Newsom is still has a commanding lead. However, if you look deeper in the survey, there's some re interesting regional differences in the governor's race, particularly fascinating. And while the leader in the U.S. Senate race does not have regional issues that we see in the governor's race, I found the Latino support for the two candidates interesting in light of the fact that one of the candidates has been one of the highest ranking Latinos in California for several years. I'm sure Alyssa will provide us with some important and fun facts about these races. Not much has also changed into the two initiatives that we are following, Prop 6, the gas tax initiative, and Prop 10 related to rent control. But actually, that's not true. There's some really interesting facts in the crosstabs that I'm sure folks who are watching the targeted congressional races have been devouring for the last couple days since the poll came out. And that leads to my favorite subject about surveys, crosstabs. We put all our crosstabs online, um, all our previous surveys and such. Please go online and look at them. They provide such amazing details about regional differences, racial differences, party differences, age differences. And it's just a fascinating uh, place that you can explore for hours. And finally, I would be remiss if I didn't remind you, voting stations are now open in Sacramento County. As someone who tried to walk over on Monday and, and turn my ballot in, it wasn't open. So they are open now. So if you're a closet Dodger fan who lives in Sacramento and want to have a fewer knocks at your door during this weekend, turn your ballots in today. So with that, I'd like to bring Alyssa up to the podium. Thanks, Alyssa. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Deborah, and thank you all for joining us today, this Friday. So in addition to 2018 election items, we asked about um, favorability of the major political parties, and I just want to preface that favorability of the beer bread behind you is much higher than the favorability of the two parties, so please grab some while you can. So with that in mind, I just want to thank the other um, authors of this report, uh, Mark Baldessari, Dean Bonner is here today, and Luna Lopez. So as a preview of what we will be looking at today, um, I'm going to first provide some information about PPIC statewide surveys and our methodology, then get into the two main sections of our report, which include the 2018 election and then state and national issues. 
I'll follow this up with some concluding remarks, and then we will have plenty of time at the end for questions. So the mission of uh, the statewide survey is to provide timely, relevant, nonpartisan data on political, social, and economic opinions. We hope that this will inform and improve policymaking, raise awareness, and encourage discussion. Since 1998, we have provided a voice for over 350,000 Californians um, in over 170 surveys. And we survey all Californians, but we also break down our findings into registered voters as well as likely voters. So this survey in particular is part of our Californians in the Government survey series, which as Deborah mentioned is funded by the James Irvine Foundation and the PPIC Donor Circle. This survey was fielded from October 12th through the 21st. Um, so yeah, this past Sunday, it's been a busy week for our survey team. Uh, and 70% of the interviews were conducted via cell phone and 30% were conducted via landline. We spoke to over 1,700 Californians, of which we deemed 989 as likely to vote. The margin of error for the all adult sample was 3.3% and for the likely voters, 4.2%. And as I mentioned, um, two of our main sections included the 2018 election, so that uncovered topics including the gubernatorial and US Senate races, um, as well as the generic House ballot and Proposition 6 and 10. The latter half of the report and survey covered state and national issues, including uh, approval ratings of our state and federal elected officials, <coughs> healthcare policy, immigration policy, party perceptions, and the role of government. So let's just jump right in now to the 2018 election. So when it comes to the governor's race, today we find that Democratic Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom leads Republican businessman John Cox by eight points, 49 to 38%. 11 days until the election, 10% of likely voters are undecided. These are similar margins to what we found uh, in September when a slight majority of likely voters uh, favored Gavin Newsom. Today, partisan likely voters uh, support their own candidate with eight in 10 Democrats supporting Newsom and eight in 10 Republicans supporting John Cox. <coughs> with independents or no party preference voters, um, which are very much an important voting block here in California, uh, we find that there is a five point difference with Cox having a slight lead over Newsom, 43 to 38%. In September, Newsom had a five point lead over Cox among independents. So this will be very much an interesting um, thing to follow and monitor heading into the election. Among racial and ethnic groups, we find that Newsom is favored by 42 points over Cox among Latino likely voters, while white likely voters, white likely voters are divided. And when talking about racial and ethnic groups among likely voters, I want to mention that the sample sizes for our Asian American and African American findings are too small to break into um, separate analyses, um, but we do include an other racial and ethnic group group which encompasses these groups. And among likely voters in these other racial and ethnic groups, we find that Newsom leads Cox by 25 points. Regionally, we find uh, Newsom is favored by wide margins in the San Francisco Bay Area in Los Angeles, while the race is much closer in the Central Valley, Inland Empire, in Orange and San Diego counties. Some other findings of note uh, is that Newsom leads Cox among all education, income, and age groups, and also leads Cox among women by 26 points, whereas men are more divided. We also asked a question related to um, the satisfaction of candidates in the gubernatorial election. And we find that today about six in 10 likely voters say they are satisfied with their choices of candidates, whereas three in 10 say they are not satisfied. When we asked this question in October of 2014, satisfaction was slightly lower. And in October 2010, it was much lower. And at that time, only about four in 10 likely voters said they were satisfied. Back to today, seven in 10 Democratic likely voters and six in 10 Republicans say they are satisfied, while independents are more divided. We also find that at least half across all regions and demographic groups say that they are satisfied with their choices of candidates. 
Now, turning to the U.S. Senate race, uh, which features two Democrats thanks to California's top two primary system, uh, we find that incumbent Dianne Feinstein leads fellow Democrat and California State Senator Kevin DeLeon by 16 points. In September, Feinstein led DeLeon by 11 points. And today, 22% of likely voters, 23, sorry, excuse me, said they would not vote in this race, and 8% are undecided. Among Democrats, Feinstein leads De Leon by a three to one margin. And notably, half of Republicans and one in five independent likely voters say they are not going to vote in this race. Looking back at the 2016 election for US Senate, which also featured two Democrats, uh, we found similar margins of likely voters who said they would not vote. And statewide election results revealed that there were actually 1.9 million fewer votes cast for the U.S. Senate race than for the presidential. When we exclude those who say they would not vote, Feinstein lead, leads over De Leon goes up to 20 points. And originally we find Feinstein uh, leads De Leon across the state's region. However, she does not garner more than 50% um, of support in the regions. Feinstein leads De Leon by 27 points among women while men are divided. And among likely voters age 45 and older, they prefer Feinstein over De Leon by a 21 point margin, whereas those likely voters ages 18 to 44 are more divided. Reflecting back at the governor's race, we find Newsom supporters favor Feinstein, while half of Cox supporters say they will not vote. I also want to mention that um, one of the first and only scheduled events uh, between the two Senate candidates occurred at PPIC San Francisco office during the fielding of this survey. And we did not find any significant um, difference in results in our findings pre and post this event. Regarding satisfaction with the Senate candidates, we find that half of likely voters say they are satisfied with their choices while four in 10 say they are not satisfied. Democrats are far more likely to say they're satisfied than Republicans, while half of independents say they are not satisfied. Satisfaction today is similar as it were in October of 2016, but slightly lower than it was in October of 2010. At least half across age, education, and racial and ethnic groups say they are satisfied, and across regions, satisfaction is highest in Los Angeles and lowest in the Central Valley. Among those who say they are not satisfied with their candidates in this race, 40% say they would not vote. In addition to the gubernatorial and US Senate races, there has been uh, much discussion about the role California will play um, in the congressional races this midterm, um, as well as this enthusiasm gap this midterm. When asked about enthusiasm about voting for Congress this year, half of likely voters say they are extremely or very enthusiastic. This is also similar to what we found in May leading up to the primary. Today, Democrats are more likely than Republicans and independents to be at least very enthusiastic in voting for races this year. White likely voters are also slightly more likely than Latino likely voters and those in other racial and ethnic groups to say they are extremely or very excited. I'd also like to note that uh, we break down our findings among congressional, congressional districts in three different ways. Um, districts currently held by Republicans, districts held by um, Democrats, and then those that are deemed competitive by the Cook Political Report. Uh, today in California, there are 11 competitive districts, uh, nine of which are held by Republicans and two of which are Democrats. And in these competitive districts today, we find that 54% of likely voters say they are extremely or very enthusiastic about voting. Now, turning to the generic House ballot for the November races, which just generally asks if the 2018 election were being held today, um, would you vote for the Democratic or the Republican candidate in your district? And it also includes a uh, lean, lean towards follow-up. And today we find that Democrats have an 18 point edge over Republicans uh, with 55% of likely voters saying that they would vote for the Democratic candidate in their district and 37% saying they would vote for the Republican candidate in their district. 
In the Democratic-held seats, there is a 30-point lead for the Democratic candidate, and in the Republican-held seats, there is a 50-point lead for Republicans. It is also divided in the competitive House districts, as you can see here. This is similar to findings we found in September, as well as across in national polls. Regionally, Democrats are preferred by large margins in the traditionally liberal state st locations of Los Angeles and the San Francisco Bay Area, and they're also preferred by narrow margins in Orange and San Diego counties. Whereas Republicans are preferred by narrow margins in the Inland Empire, and those in the Central Valley are divided. Three in four Latino likely voters prefer the Democratic candidate, while whites are divided. And among likely voters ages 18 to 44, Democrats lead by a 14-point margin, and for likely voters above the age of 44, that lead extends to 19 points in favor of Democrats. When asked which candidate quality is more important, 48% uh, of likely voters prefer congressional candidates to push back against the Trump administration, while 45% said that they should work with the Trump administration. As you might expect, partisan likely voters are on opposite sides, with nearly 8 in 10 Democrats saying they prefer to push back, while almost all of Republicans saying that these candidates should work with the Trump administration. This sentiment is even higher among those who approve of President Trump, with 94% saying this. The expected regional divide is present with majorities in Los Angeles and the San Francisco Bay Area preferring pushing back against the administration, and at least half in the Central Valley, Inland Empire, and Orange and San Diego counties saying these leaders should work with the Trump administration. Notably, women and Latinos prefer candidates to push back whereas whites and men both prefer candidates to work with the Trump administration. So we also wanted to look at some of the ballot propositions Californians will weigh in on at the polls this year. Uh, there are 11 on the ballot, and we asked about two, of which we consider very important. So first, we asked about Proposition 6, uh, which is an initiative constitutional amendment that would repeal the recent gas tax increases in vehicle fees and also would require future increases uh, to be approved by the electorate. <coughs> Today, we find that about half of likely voters say they would vote no on Proposition 6, while 4 in 10 say they would vote yes. 11% are also unsure. Findings were similar to what we found in September when 52% of likely voters said that they would vote no. As you might expect, this is a partisan issue with six in 10 Democrats saying they would vote no, while half of Republicans saying that they would vote yes. Notably, Republicans and likely, voter, likely voters in Orange and San Diego are the only groups among parties, regions, and demographic groups to say that they would vote yes, so that very much goes to show the widespread opposition among many groups. The other proposition we asked about is Proposition 10, which would expand the authority of local governments to enact rent control. And today, we find that six in 10 likely voters say they would vote no on the initiative statute. A quarter would vote yes, and 15% are unsure. Opposition to Proposition 10 has increased since September, when 48% of likely voters said they would vote no, and 36% said they would vote yes. So there's, so there's been a 12-point increase in opposition since we last polled. Today, a majority of Democrats say they would vote no, along with three in four Republicans and six in 10 independents. In fact, Proposition 10 fails to reach majority support across demographic groups and regions, and notably among renters who you would expect to be impacted by these policies, 53% said they would vote no. We also asked likely voters how big of a problem is housing affordability in your region of the state, and we found that 66% say it is a big problem. And those who say they would vote yes on Proposition 10 are more likely than opponents to say housing affordability is a big problem, 73 to 62%. 
So now moving on from the election, we asked about state and national issues, including the approval rating uh, of Governor Brown as he nears the end of his years in public office and the California state legislature. So today we find that Governor Brown and the California legislature continue to enjoy positive approval ratings. Today, 48% of Californians approve of Governor Brown, and in fact, Governor Brown's approval rating has not fallen below 48% in the last four years. Today, seven in 10 Democrats and four in 10 independents approve of Governor Brown, whereas only 15% of Republicans say the same. Governor Brown's approval rating is highest in the San Francisco Bay Area and lowest in the Inland Empire. And across racial and ethnic groups, Latinos are more likely than those in other groups uh, to approve of Governor Brown. Now, turning to the state legislature, we find that 45% of Californians improve, including 6 in 10 Democrats, 4 in 10 independents, and 14% of Republicans. Again, we find that in the more traditionally uh, liberal areas, such as San Francisco Bay Area and Los Angeles, that half of Californians approve of the state legislature, while fewer elsewhere say the same. Now, federal elected officials don't fare near as well as state officials here in California today. Uh, we find that 29% of Californians and 39% of likely voters approve of President Trump, uh, and the likely voter statistic is actually a high mark in PPIC statewide surveys. Uh, for comparison, when President Trump entered office in January of 2017, his approval rating was 30% among Californians, so hasn't shifted quietly among adults. Today, partisans are divided as 8 in 10 Republicans approve of the president, while 9 in 10 Democrats disapprove. And in fact, Republicans are the only group where the president's approval rating is above majority support. Turning to U.S. Congress, only 25% of Californians and 20% of likely voters approve. And while partisans are divided when it comes to Trump, there is bipartisan disapproval of U.S. Congress. In addition, majorities disapprove of U.S. Congress across regions in all demographic groups, illustrating how pervasive uh, disapproval is among Californians. Now, looking at how Californians are feeling about the nation more generally, we find that 36% say they think the nation is heading in the right direction, and about half expect good economic times for the nation in the next 12 months. Republicans are about <laughs> twice as likely as Democrats to say the nation is heading in the right direction and that they expect good times financially. Residents in Orange and San Diego counties are the most likely to say they expect good times and to say that they think the nation is heading in the right direction, while those in San Francisco Bay Area are the least likely. Across racial and ethnic groups, whites are more likely to say they expect good times and say that the U.S. is heading in the right direction uh, compared to fewer Asian Americans, Latinos, and African Americans. Now, onto the question of size of government. Today, we find that 54% of Californians prefer a bigger government providing more services, and 39% say they prefer a smaller government that would provide fewer services. Similar majorities of Californians favored bigger government providing more services when we asked this question in 2017 and 2016. Today, partisans are divided on this question, with 66% of Democrats preferring a bigger government and 83% of Republicans preferring a larger, or preferring a smaller government, sorry. Just about half of independents favor a smaller government. And a slim majority of whites prefer smaller government, while about seven in 10 African Americans and Latinos prefer a bigger government providing more services. In addition, majorities of women, younger Californians, lower income Californians, and those with just a high school diploma prefer a bigger government with more services. 
Now, moving on to the topic of immigration, uh, with the U.S. Department of Justice suing California over three immigration-related laws enacted by the state legislature of last year, uh, we asked how Californians feel about state and local governments making their own policies separate from the federal government to protect the legal rights of undocumented immigrants. Today, we find that a majority of Californians are in favor of the state and local governments taking action, and majorities, in fact, have held these views each of the five times we have asked this question since January of 2014. Today, three in four Democrats prefer or favor state action, while three in four Republicans oppose. Independents are divided on this question. Latinos are more likely than African Americans, Asian Americans, and whites to be in favor. And across regions, more than half of residents in all areas, except Orange and San Diego counties, um, are in favor. So with a very much a looming post-battle election over President Trump's signature campaign promise um, of a wall along the Mexican border and pending um, troops being sent down to the border, uh, a strong majority of Californians uh, continue to be opposed to the idea. At least two in three Californians have opposed building a wall along the entire border of Mexico each of the six times we've asked this question since May of 2016. Today, there is a stark partisan divide uh, with 90% of Democrats and 71% of independents opposed to the wall, while two in three Republicans are in favor. Majorities across regions and demographic groups are opposed. However, differences do exist within these groups. Across regions, opposition is highest in the San Francisco Bay Area, followed by Los Angeles, the Central Valley, the Inland Empire, and Orange and San Diego counties. Across racial and ethnic groups, African Americans, Latinos, and Asian Americans are more likely than whites to oppose the wall. With moving on to um, healthcare policy, with nationwide enrollment of the Affordable Care Act beginning uh, November 1st, we ask how Californians feel about the law today. Today, we find that 59% of Californians have a generally favorable view of the Affordable Care Act, while 33% view it unfavorably. Opinions of the law were less favorable in May, but much more favorable in September of last year when Republicans in Congress were attempting to repeal the law. Today, strong majorities of Democrats view the law favorably, and strong majorities of Republicans view it unfavorably. A majority of independents also view it favorably. Across racial and ethnic groups, African Americans are by far uh, the most positive about the Affordable Care Act, with about 8 in 10 viewing the law as favorable. Favorable opinions about the Affordable Care Act are also higher among women and younger adults than men and older Californians. So now, when it comes to the federal government's role in providing health care coverage, a solid majority of Californians say it is the responsibility of the federal government to make sure all Americans have health care coverage. Overwhelming majorities of Democrats say it is the government's responsibility, as do six in ten independents and one in four Republicans. Majorities across regions and demographic groups say it is the government's responsibility. Yet, when it comes to how health care insurance should be provided, Californians are divided on whether it should be a single payer system or a mix of private insurance companies and government programs. Among those who think it is the government's responsibility, 52% think it should be provided through a single payer system and 41% say it should be provided through a mix of programs. Now, when it comes to the favorability of major political parties, we find that 46% of Californians have a favorable impression of the Democrat, Democratic Party, while 3 in 10 have a favorable impression of the Republican Party. 
Notably, favorability towards the Democratic Party was higher in October of 2016, while favorability towards the Republican Party at that time was somewhat lower. Today, partisans have a favorable view of their own party, with 7 in 10 Democrats having a favorable view of the Democratic Party and 7 in 10 Republicans having a favorable view of the Republican Party. Majorities of independents uh, have an unfavorable view of both the Democratic and the Republican Party. Women are more likely than men to have a favorable impression of the Democratic Party, yet less than a third of both men and women view the Republican Party favorably. Across all regions and demographic groups, fewer than four in 10 adults have a favorable impression of the Republican Party. And compared to registered voters nationwide in an October CNN poll, Californian registered voters are as likely to have a favorable impression of the Democratic Party, while they are more likely than registered voters nationwide to have a favorable view of the Republican Party. So given these impressions of the major parties, we asked Californians if they felt that a third major party is needed. And today, a majority of adults and likely voters say that a third party is needed. Majorities, in fact, have said a third party is needed uh, when we last asked this question in December of last year, as well as in periodic PPIC surveys since 2006. Today, independents are much more likely than Democrats and Republicans to say a third party is needed, although majorities across the major parties say that a third party is needed. Additionally, majorities across all the state's regions and demographics groups say that a third party is needed. And across racial and ethnic groups, about two in three African Americans, six in 10 whites, and half of Asian Americans and Latinos say that a third party is needed. So let me wrap up and bring up some key points and then we can open it up for questions. So in the race for governor, Democratic Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom remains ahead of Republican businessman John Cox. In the race for U.S. Senate, incumbent Dianne Feinstein leads fellow Democrat Kevin DeLeon, with half of Republicans undecided or not planning to vote in this race. In the U.S. House races, a majority of likely voters favor the Democratic candidate in their district, with Democrats more likely than Republican and independents to be at least very enthusiastic about voting in races for Congress this year. Two closely watched ballot measures, Proposition 6, uh, which would repeal the gas tax increases, and Proposition 10, which would expand local rent control authority, are trailing among likely voters as we head to the election. Governor Brown and the California legislature are viewed much more positively than our President Trump and the US Congress. Uh, with immigration a hot topic, uh, Californians continue to support state and local governments making their own policies separate from the federal government to protect the rights of undocumented immigrants. And we find that majorities are opposed to the wall. And in regards to party perceptions, fewer than half of Californians have a favorable view of the Democratic Party, and less than a third have a favorable view of the Republican Party. And finally, most say that a third major party is needed. Okay, so at this point, I would like to now open it up for questions, but please wait until a mic is handed to you. Thank you. I had a quick question. On the US Senate race, when you guys poll, do you tell respondents that both of the candidates are Democrats? Uh, yes, we provide, we basically, the answer categories are Kevin DeLeon, a Democrat, Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat. Okay. That's interesting. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Hi, did you poll on any of the other statewide um, uh, positions, especially state superintendent of public instruction? No, uh, just given sort of our constraining amount of questions and time, we've increased our um, cell phone coverage and that takes up a lot of time. Um, we did fact in April post in our K through 12 survey, um, uh, poll about the state superintendent, but we haven't had the opportunity to do that since. <coughs> Hi, 
Yeah. So I don't hog all the questions. Um, on the gas tax, when you guys raised the question on the slides when I saw the, the initial slides that you had, you don't make reference, you, you put quotes around ex eliminating certain road repair. Did you, when you ask the question, you point out that it is the gas tax? Actually, so we use the official ballot title and Correct. summary that voters will see on the ballots. Um, and we use that instead of providing a summary that others may do. So last month we actually, um, we included this question, then we asked a more generic question that asked about um, just repealing the gas tax in general. And we found significant differences between the two questions. Okay. So yeah. yeah, you should definitely check that out. Yeah. Do you have a breakdown between homeowners and renters? Uh, yes, uh, we have that breakdown um, for all of our questions, and that can be found in the cross tabs. I don't know if you're referring to a specific question, no, but yeah, general, yeah. Do you have an idea what it is now? Uh, not off the top of my head because it varies uh, via sample size per question, but you can check each of the numbers on the cross tabs. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, if there are no other questions, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Thank you.